What is up, my ducks and drakes? Welcome to the Carter Lake, and today we're going to be reading chapter 11 of Bad Moon Rising by Becca911. If there is any trigger warnings and stuff in this chapter at all, they'll be in the description, so you could check that out without any spoilers. There's also some links to my own socials and a link to a Google form where you can recommend fanfics for the future as we are finishing up this book in the next couple weeks. With that being said, here is chapter 11. Deceit was spinning. He was twirling, twisting, and controlling in a way that made his bones crunch and grind together, made his skin pult, taunt, and the stretch further. It wasn't possible, but he was twisting and twisting and spinning and spinning, his core tightening and tightening until there was a snap and a piece of the wall that he'd been clutching fell to the ground and broke into smaller pieces. Rima swore colorfully, jumping back. His green stitch failed limply in the air before dissolving into small green speckles. What the hell, Dee? Rima snapped. We don't have time for this. Deceit hurt him. Of course he did. Why wouldn't he? It was hard to ignore someone when there was no other sounds. The shadows around him hung over his shoulders, tired and worn and oh, so hollow. Something had shifted. Something had changed. Listen, he hissed, lowering into a shallow crouch. His skin prickled. His left pinky twitched. The shadow stirred weakly and tapped at his scales, pressed in the scabs from where they had drawn blood. Deceit didn't brush them off. Remus gave him a strange look, leaning on his club and picking at his teeth. You've got a couple screw loose, dear. Deceit bared his teeth. A stray thin strand of darkness cooed in his ear, pressing against the line of his cheek. Something cold pooled at the base of his spine. Something's wrong, he murmured quietly. Remus grunted dismissively. Whatever, man. Can we go back to what we were supposed to be doing? We've got a countdown, remember? Forget the countdown. Something is wrong. Deceit! Remus snapped and deceit startled because Remus didn't like to address him like that. Remus teased and taunted and thought up crude nicknames. He glared at his companion. Remus glared right back. You crazy son of a bitch. Remus snarled, keeping his voice low. I know what you're trying to achieve by doing this, but it won't work if we don't hurry. The others, are you already here, Duke? A cool voice interrupted. Remus bristled, leaving his weapon as though it would do any good. Deceit raised his chin and settled his face into something calm and disinterested. The shadows that were draped over his shoulders moved in unease. Something skittered past them, invisible and fast. Deceit ignored the feeling and raked through his veins. I see we're all gathered here today, he twitched his mouth into a crescent moon smirk. Celebrating something, are we? Or perhaps mourning, the same cool voice said. The tone edged with something dangerously close to displeasure. After all, this is the second time you have tried to betray us, deceit. And we do not take lightly to deserters. You took well to Virgil, and he left first. Virgil made some interesting choices, but we did not banish him beyond the wall. It is a shame, Deceit, how quickly you forget the lessons you learned during your time in exile. Deceit's blood strained under his skin, the shadows around him warping and hissing with outrage. He'd made friends with them during his exile. They felt rather strongly about what had happened there. What deceit had faced, what deceit had had touched, had known. He shouldn't have survived being thrust into unforgiving darkness. That much concentrated dark energy should have torn him apart, shredded him nothing. It hadn't. Deceit had absorbed. When he emerged, passing through the wall with ease now that he made of the same hatred and darkness, he twisted his shadows around Remus's neck and forced that same ugly, twisted essence under his skin. 
Betrayal does not equal favor, Duke. The only thing that has saved Remus from Deceit's wrath was the promise that he would help retrieve Virgil. At the time, Deceit had agreed with a smile because he's fully intended to throw Virgil into the same darkness he'd just come back from. And then watch Anxiety was born anew. Now, well, Deceit's grin got a little too sharp, a little too dangerous. He fully intended to throw someone beyond the wall. It just wasn't Virgil anymore. Listen, Remus drawled, kicking at the rubble. I really don't think you know what's happening here. I know enough, Duke, the cool voice dismissed. Deceit hummed to himself, reaching inwards and dipping a finger into the dwindling pool inside his chest. A thin strand of yellow chased the shadows down his skin, but halted at his fingertips, twisting around his nails. The energy was warm, heady, angry. This was the magic he learned during his exile. I think, he said consideringly, staring at the owner of that cool voice, that you should have let him talk. The thread of energy shed away from his fingers, and that cool voice choked on a horrified cry as deceit drained away everything, like it had a battery and nothing more. Logan knew that deceit had entered his room. The white walls turned gray with fear, and there was a sudden shadow shuddering and bayed in the corners, bloodthirsty and cruel. Logan was not afraid. He was not the pawn in deceit's game. Not yet. Ah... Logan. Deceit purred somewhere behind him. His voice was low-pitched, the smooth tones rich and honeyed. He was wanting something. He knew something. Logan sighed to himself and turned around, adjusting his glasses casually. Snake? He greeted easily, adopting Virgil's nickname without really thinking about it. I trust you're here for a reason? Deceit smiled, low and soft, a chill darted up Logan's arms. He was not a fearful person by nature, but something about deceit seemed otherworldly, unnatural. There was a shimmer to the shadows, a hollowness in his eyes, something that happened in the darkness recently, and it had changed variable. Thomas's psyche was shifting, mutating. Logan. Deceit hummed again. That alone was proof enough. Logan gripped onto the arm of the chair, feeling an irrational sliver of anger burn in his throat. What have you done? His demanding voice, hard and cold. What have you done, Deceit? If you've broken the coat, Deceit laughed, silky and gentle. Logan cut himself off. <laughs> Relax, Deceit said smoothingly, shadows falling between his fingers like sand. I know the code. I haven't done anything that may harm my host. The changes I've made are mi minimal. I've removed a problem, something Thomas won't miss. You must trust me, Logan. I do not place my trust in a liar. Ah. Deceit paused, amused. A liar. Logan was not fond of games. If you will not tell me what is, what it is you're changing, then I must demand that we... Resolve the situation with Patton. Does he gasp mockingly, face schooled in a perfect imitation of surprise? The shadows chattered in glee. Logan fought to swallow his words. Does he dropped the act after a moment, lips twisting into a hateful smile? Oh dear, he said sadly, the softness in his voice lined with steel barbs. How tangled this has become. You see, there is no situation with Patton. There is only truth and honesty, and pain. You cannot speak about truth while being the embodiment of lies, Logan. Deceit's smile only became more twisted. Is this the comfort you gave Virgil too? I must say, it explains why he went off the rails like he did. It must be hard choosing you lovely little outsides, only to be scorned and hurt. <laughs> Logan gritted his teeth. We have moved past that. Deceit cackled, the sound unhinged and jackal-like. It was not what Deceit usually sounded like. Logan's chest tightened with unease. Whatever was shifting with the dark sides, it was obvious that Deceit was in the middle of it. 
After a moment, deceit settled, clucking his tongue. Logan almost missed the thin tendril of yellow energy that hissed over deceit's scales. I did not come here to discuss Virgil, the liar said. He made his choice. He won't make that mistake again. No, no, no. I'm here about Patton. Logan was tempted to ask about the blatant lie, the faux dismissal of Virgil as the topic of conversation. It was obvious that Virgil's disternation of the dark sides had left a fault line, a crack, a splinter. Now they were breaking apart and deceit was the earthquake that was forcing them into pieces. But there was something on deceit's face, an emotion that seemed to be at odds with the rest of the snake's emotions. Logan could see the vulnerability tucked away behind the sneer and mockery. Deceit was at war with himself. Maybe this was Logan's chance. Virgil, do not. Deceit snarled, his slippery ease vanishing in an instant. I am here about Patton. He is my experiment, and you meddling light sides are ruining things with your optimism. Stop trying to help him. You will achieve nothing. I demand that you leave him alone, Deceit, Logan argued angrily, his anger frigid and jagged, his voice was ragged and frosty. Your pushing has caused monumental change with the group dynamic. We have a serious situation on our hands. Deceit's features softened once more, and the shadows in the corner of the room blurred until their baying settled, a soft whining. Logan, everything is fine. Patton is just dealing with an issue. Isn't that what you all love to do? Work through your issues independently while being extremely angsty? Cold fury was rising in Logan, a natural response to the mockery that Deceit was ex. He slapped the arm of the chair, rising to his feet. Deceit eyes him curiously. Patton is not a part of your games, he said lowly. Virgil and Roman are not a part of your games, and I'm not a part of your games. Stop meddling, Deceit. Nothing good will come of it. Deceit's easy humor darkened. My job is to Thomas, not you. And how do you think Thomas will cope with the constant emotional trauma, hmm? Logan couldn't stop the ice from slipping out of his voice. Your meddling set us off balance, yes, but we are the main aspects of Thomas's personality. How do you think our host will adapt to us being at odds? How well do you think he will cope with the constant fighting and emotional outbursts and unbalanced emotions? Deceit's shadows squirmed. The tiny yellow threads sparkled on Deceit's scales. Is this care for Thomas or concern? For your lovely little Patton. Without thinking, without considering that this was what deceit wanted, Logan said, My host is my priority. Patton's refusal to acknowledge his emotions grows tedious and repetitive. Victory, dominated deceit's expression, and Logan collapsed in his chair, defeated and upset. He hated deceit, hated the way the dark side could twist his words as easily as he could twist his appearance. Well, well, <laughs> deceit crewed smugly. Now the truth comes out, and you call me a liar. <laughs> Get out. Logan's voice was flat. Deceit laughed that jackal laugh, but obediently sketched a bow and stepped into the shadows, flickering away, and between blinks, he vanished. And then it was like he'd never been there at all. Rima skittered away from Deceit when he appeared, the final pieces of the wall scattering under his feet. Deceit ignored them, surveying the almost complete wall with no measure of satisfaction. Things were pro progressing, and progressing well. There was one more step he needed to complete, one more job to do before he could finish the wall. He turned to Remus, who stared back, lips pressed together tightly. Deceit raised an eyebrow. Is there something wrong, darling Duke? Remus paled slightly, shaking his head. Fuck, you're scary, he said, exhaling sharply. You're going feral, D. It's this damn wall. If you weren't always so close to the damn thing, you wouldn't have to. He cut himself off and looked away. The seat frowned. Surely you're... You aren't still on about the incident before. Remus twitched but said nothing. Deceit scoffed. That was unfortunate, yes, but necessary. Look how much the wall we managed to fix with that extra energy. We aren't expendable, Rima said quietly but firmly. 
The dark sides aren't. Aren't batteries, okay? You drained one of us dry without a thought, and you made it slow. You wouldn't have done that before. Wouldn't I? Deceit made sure that when he bared his teeth, there were yellow sparks falling from his mouth. He felt dangerous. Rima shook his head and turned away. The way you're acting. It's the way you acted when you came back from beyond the wall. Deceit grappled with thin threads inside him, splaying out through his body like puppet strings. They sizzled under his grip. He said in a low, predatory voice, I am astonished that you haven't noticed, Remus. It's a little disappointing, if I'm honest. Remus spun around and quirked an eyebrow. What? The realization lit his eyes, deceit nodding, running an invisible finger along the yellow strings inside himself. Our clock stopped. Time had run out. The moment was now. Thank you all so much for listening. If you'd like to stay tuned for next week, I recommend you subscribe because we are only three more chapters away from finishing the entire series and it is so good. I recommend that you go support Becca911 on Wattpad. All the links will be in the description below to the fanfic and to the creator, along with some links to my own socials. Once again, thank you for watching and much like Logan trying to hold it together, do your best.